Okay, let's take a look. 7.1, describe an electric field. Well, it is the region in space, so on and so on. I know that is not the question we're interested in. Uh, we're interested in 7.3. Let's just do 7.2 first and move to 7.3. I know that is the question you're here for, okay? So 7.2, draw the resultant electric field pattern due to charges A and B. Let's take a, let's take a look at A. A is positive. B is positive. So they're going to repel. They have the same magnitude. So we're going to have something that looks like uh, they're following. They are going to repel because they are large charges. Uh, they are both positive. So the field lines should be pointing away from the charge. The arrow, this arrow should be pointing away from the charge and not uh, towards like we would see in a negatively charged sphere. Okay, so we are supposed to have something like this. Okay, two positive charges, they're going to repel. This is how the electric field pattern is going to look like, 7.2. Taking a look at 7.3, okay. So in 7.3, we are told that the magnitude of the net electric field pattern at point P is 27. So we have E net being equals to 27 newtons per column of charge. Let's calculate the value of R. Let's take a look at our situation, okay? My grade 10 kids can solve this question. Let me just leave it like that. Let's carry on, okay? So we have A, which is positive. We have B, which is positive. We are given the net electric field at point P, okay? So let's have a vector for the electric field due to A and the electric field due to B at point P, okay? The way we do this is we always assume that at point P, we have a positively charged sphere, okay? So let's take a look at A and P. If A is positive and P is positive, that is repulsion. So P is going to be pushed to the right by A, okay? So this is the electric field as a consequence of A. Now let's take a look at P, which is positive, and B, which is positive, okay? We have repulsion once again. So this will be the electric field as a consequence of B at point P. As you can see, we're going to have E net being equals to EA minus EB. But we have the value of E net. E net is 27. We're going to have 27 being equals to the electric field due to A. What you want to write first is the equation. You need to write E is equals to KQ divided by R squared. There's a formula for this. So make sure that you don't forget to write that somewhere. Okay. If I go ahead and, and substitute on that formula, I'm going to have 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the magnitude of A, which is 3 times 10 to the power minus 9 divided by the distance between P and A. It is given to us as R. So we're going to have R squared, okay? Minus 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by R. But R, the distance between P and B is 2R. So we're going to have 2R squared, okay? This will be equals to, so we have 27 uh, being equals to... 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by r squared. Minus 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9. Everything divided by 4r squared. Okay, so now it comes down to mathematics. Other people will use different methods, so on and so on. But ultimately, we must get to the same answer. So this is how I did it. I'm taking 1 divided by r squared as a common factor on the right-hand side. Let me show you what I'm going to have. I will have 27 being equals to open bracket 
9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 1. Minus 9 times 10 to the minus 9 multiplied by, not to the minus 9, but to the plus 9, okay? I think I made the same mistake there. To the power 9, to the power 9, multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9, divided by 4, okay? I'm taking 1 divided by r squared as a common factor. So I can go ahead and put this in my calculator, okay? So I will have 27 being equals to. So let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator once more. So I have 3, not 3, but 9. 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 1. Minus 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 4. Okay? If I put that in my calculator, I get 20.25 multiplied by 1 divided by r squared, okay? So this is just 27 being equals to 20.25 divided by r squared. If I go ahead and cross multiply, I'm going to get 27 r squared being equals to 20.25. So r squared is equals to 20.25 divided by 27. And that is 0.75. So I'm taking square roots on both sides. Okay, let me go ahead and do that. If I do that, I get 0 0.87 meters. And when I substitute it back into my equation for E net, I get 27. So I'm quite convinced that R is indeed equals to 0 0.87. So that is 7.3. That is 7.3. Let me know in the comments if you got a different answer. But it is probably wrong. Yeah, it is probably wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. It's probably wrong. I think R is 0 0.87 meters. Just let me know in the comments. Did you get the same thing? Oh, there's something I'm missing here. Okay. Uh, 7.4. Calculate the magnitude of the net electrostatic force that an electron will experience if placed at P. So we know that E is equal to F divided by Q. Okay. So if we want to find F and we have E, we just see F is equal to E multiplied by Q. The net electric field is 27. Okay, so we have 27 multiplied by Q. Q being the charge of an electron. So we are only interested in the magnitude. So we're going to have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. I think if you put that in your calculator, you should get 4.32 times 10 to the minus 18 newtons. Right. Let me know in the comments if we got the same answer. I'm just putting it in my calculator once more to verify. 4.32 times 10 to the minus 18 newtons. So there we go. Question 7. Did we get the same answer? Let me know.